sex the existential bioenergy. We are afraid to discuss sex. Why are we so morally afraid of this subject? It is because of a presupposition that man may become sexual just by talking about sex. This view is totally wrong. There is, after all, a vast difference between sex and sexuality. Our society will only be free of the ghost of sex when we develop the courage to talk about sex in a rational and healthy manner. Only then sex will be transformed into something sublime. Sex is considered a taboo in almost all societies, sects and religions. Talking about sex is considered profane and undivine. Your priests and so-called religious ones do not use these words much to talk about sex. I have heard that once there was a so-called saint who started visiting the village where prominent businessman Chandulal lived. Chandulal being the most prominent one became the host of, for the saint. His discourses were regularly attended by Chandulal's wife and the son who had to accompany the mother. One day it happened during the session the young boy felt the urge for washroom. So he asked the mother to accompany him to the washroom. The Swami heard this. Afterwards he told Chandulal's wife to teach the child manners. Such words are profane and should not be used. Whenever there is an urging for washroom, instead of saying directly, it should be said that I want to sing a song and things like these. Time went on. The visit of the Swami became more frequent. The Swami even started staying at the residence of Chandulal. The wife became his devotee and deposed total trust in the Swami. At the same time, with much difficulty, the child learned the new lesson. Each time, whenever he had the urge to go to the washroom, he would say, I want to sing a song. The mother would understand and the Swami would also be very pleased that at least the child is learning the lessons. It so happened one day while Swami was staying at the residence of Chandulal, the wife had to go somewhere urgently but she could not carry the son. So, she requested the Swami to take care of the son for whom the Swami had developed fondness. The Swami agreed willingly. When the child woke up, the Swami, he said, Swamiji, I want to sing a song. Reluctantly, Swami woke up and hushed the child to go back to sleep as this was not the time to sing songs. The helpless child went to sleep but a little while after he woke up the Swami again that he must sing now. If I do not sing now, the song will start singing on its own. The Swami tried to convince the child to sing the song in the morning instead of singing in the night and disturbing his sleep. But the child insisted that he has to sing the song now, otherwise the song will happen on its own. With no choice, the drowsy Swami told the child to sing the song softly in his ears. The Swami was sleepy, so when the child started singing the song and Swami felt the warmth of the song, he immediately woke up and wanted to know what is this all about. The child wanted to sing, but instead this he got angry at the child and at the same time the mother came and heard the entire matter. The much angry Swami started throwing words at the mother that she could not teach manners to the child. 
At this the mother reminded the Swami that it was he who told her not to use the ugly phrases, instead use the phrase sing a song when there is an urge to go to the washroom. And when the child has learned now you are complaining, such is the situation of your so-called religious ones. Deep down they may be filled with ugly thoughts but on the surface they pretend. In such a society sex will become and remain a taboo and man cannot go beyond. In the beginning there was energy, the unheard and uncreated energy. First this existential energy is divided into male and female components. Hindus call these components as Shiva and Shakti. Chinese mystics call this as Yin and Yang. These components are invisible form of Shiva and Shakti. Shiva himself is known as Bhairav, one who is beyond all duality. As an individual you are born under certain planetary arrangements which determine the level of health and growth pattern. This bioenergy at the base is known as sex energy. It is in this form bioenergy has become a taboo in almost all religions and cultures. The process of transformation of this energy is called Kundalini. By nature this existential bioenergy moves downwards. And when the direction of this energy changes from downward movement to upward movement, it is said Kundalini is aroused. Therefore, Kundalini arousal is just the beginning of the process of transformation. Kundalini has two ends. We know the lower end, but the other or the higher end is hidden from human cognition. Paolo Coelho writes in one of his blogs why sexuality is a taboo for most religions. Why should we suppress something that was given by God to us in the name of God? We don't know why. Sex is craved, desired, dreamed about and wished for. And yet it is hated as a sin and condemned at the same time. Sex is one of the most repressed terms, so much so that people do not even utter the word in society. Sermons are given that sex is bad and satanic and it is considered as filthy, sin and even hated by God. If that be the case, then why sex instincts are given to mankind? Such instincts are natural. The only thing that is required of you is to place in the right place. Sex and spirituality, these two words are used in conflict with one another. It is considered a taboo and a sin. Every other day there is news in the media of sex crimes and scandals in cities, towns, offices, in a church or in some ashram. It is highlighted in a most perverted manner. On the other hand, in some parts of the world, some tribal communities practice sex rituals but in secrecy due to fear of disapproval and in these communities sex crimes and eve teasing is not even heard of. Tantra does not define sex as a need. Tantra regards sex as a powerful instinctual return of our ultimate reality, one of the highest forms of meditation. We are afraid to discuss sex. Why are we so morally afraid and depressed of this subject? 
it is because of a presupposition that man may become sexual just by talking about sex. This view is totally wrong. There is, after all, a vast difference between sex and sexuality. Our society will only be free of the ghost of sex when we develop the courage to talk about sex in a rational and healthy manner. This is the first step towards transformation. It is only by understanding sex in all its aspects that we will be able to transcend this bioenergy. Only then you will be spiritual in the real sense of the word. Only then the flowering of the being will happen. You cannot free yourself from a problem just by closing your eyes to it. Only a madman thinks his enemy will vanish if he closes his eyes. The ostrich in the desert thinks in this way. The ostrich thrusts his head into the sand and since he cannot see his enemy, he thinks his enemy is not there. Such logic can be forgiven in case of the ostrich, but not in case of a man. As far as sex is concerned, man behaves no better than the ostrich. He thinks that by closing his eyes or by ignoring, sex will vanish. If such miracle could happen, life would be very easy indeed. However, in reality, nothing disappears just by pulling down the curtains. On the contrary, this is proof that we are scared of sex. And the reason is that its attraction is far more powerful than our resistance. Because we feel we cannot conquer sex, therefore it is better to shut our eyes to it. Shutting one's eyes is a sign of weakness and the entire humanity is guilty of it. By closing his eyes, man blatantly has entered into innumerable inner conflicts. The devastating results of this war with sex are too well known to be enumerated here. 98% of mental illnesses or neurosis is the outcome of separation of sex. 99% of the women suffering from hysteria and related illnesses suffer from sexual disorders. The major cause of fear, of doubt, of anxiety, of stress and strain on contemporary men is the pressure of passion. I repeat this. The major cause of fear, of doubt, of anxiety, of stress and strain on contemporary man is the pressure of passion. Man has turned his back on an inherent and powerful urge. Without attempting to understand sex, we have closed our eyes to it out of fear. And the results have been catastrophic indeed. To see the truth of this, man need only scan his literature, the mirror of his mind. If a man from the other planet were to come here and go through our literature, by reading our books and our poetry or see our paintings, he would be surprised. He would wonder why all our art and literature is centered on sex. Just think over it. Why are all poems, novels, magazines and stories saturated with sex? Why is there a half-naked woman on every magazine cover? Why a half-naked woman is the most potent promotional media? Why bikini-clad girls constantly advertise even the male items? 
cars and tires. Now why bikini clad girls be source of entertainment in games like cricket and others? Why is every movie concerned with lust? He would certainly ask. He would be perplexed. The alien visitor will wonder. The alien visitor would wonder why man thought about nothing but sex. He would be even more confused if he met a man and talk to him because the man would try very hard to impress upon him that he was totally innocent of the existence of sex. The man would talk about the soul of God, about heaven, about emancipation, but he would not say a word about sex. Although his whole being would be filled with ideas about sex, the alien would be stunned to learn that man has even invented a thousand and one devices to gratify a desire about which not a breath is uttered, not even a single word is uttered. With this kind of understanding, sex will always remain a taboo and man will remain engrossed into it. No transcendence is possible. Transcendence is possible only when you understand the crux of the matter and in that very understanding you go beyond.